So today we're going over Giuliani Arpeggios number one to three. This is from his 120 arpeggio exercises for the right hand from his Opus 1. You probably already have this book, um, or you probably already have these arpeggios, so just follow along with the video for free. But if you're interested, all 120 are in my technique book, and there's a link for that book underneath the video. So a couple of things to talk about today. On the one hand, we're going to talk about how these three arpeggios are really useful in terms of breaking down your actual repertoire. So the similarities between studying some technique exercises and studying your repertoire and how these can be useful ways um, in, um, that give you ideas on how to practice your repertoire. Before you practice the 120 Giuliani arpeggios, I highly recommend that you go through my 100 open string exercises for the right hand. That gives the right hand alone, with no left hand, um, an opportunity to go through a ton, well, 100 different patterns for the right hand without the worry of synchronizing it with the left hand. Um, it really is important that you turn your right hand into um, a tool that works for you, um, something that can work on automatic pilot a little bit, that you've solidified some of the physical movements and technical habits and muscle memory. So those 100 open string exercises, I think, are a better place to start than to dive into these um, 120 arpeggio exercises, which um, some of which are, are fairly challenging. Okay, I have another video on how to practice the 120 arpeggios. Um, there's a link for that in the description as well. Um, in that one, I cover a lot of topics such as planting, and I'll talk about that a little bit today as well. So first thing, let me just play you the three arpeggios so that you can just hear them and see why I've chosen these three. They all use the same chords, um, a C chord and a G7 chord with a B in the bass. Number one. Number two. Number three. Of course, you can do these at various different speeds. And I do recommend when you actually practice them to do the repeat that is listed there. So, you know, you could practice, like, for example, number two, you could go really slow. Depending on your level, right? Or, you know, if you're more advanced. Or... Um, so you have to you have to choose um, what speed you're going to be practicing these at, and as always, practice them at all different speeds. Um, there's benefits to practicing it slowly, and benefits to challenging yourself to go faster. This is a really good example of how to break down your arpeggios in your pieces. If you have an arpeggio in your piece, breaking it down to solid form chords. instead of broken is a great way to break up the, the learning of the muscle memory. When you practice solid chords, the chord itself gets really solidified in your muscle memory, and also the, the string spacing in the right hand also gets very solidified in your right hand as well. You know, it, it really can teach you like the most compact version of the arpeggio in its solid form. So it's really important that when you're practicing that you think about that and that when you're practicing your pieces, if you have a passage in a piece that has arpeggios in it or whatever the you know, arpeggio pattern might be, that you break it down into a solid form to just gain some of that muscle memory. Now, uh, before we talk about planting, um, 
let's just talk about uh, the difference between playing number one versus number two and three. When you play number one, you have to move all the left hand fingers and all the right hand fingers at the same time. You know, when you switch chords, especially in the left hand, you have to really like hop off the strings and land back on the strings. I think of it as a trampoline and these are your feet. You spring off the trampoline in a midair, you create the new shape where your feet have to land and then gravity pulls you back down. So in midair, you create the shape and then plant back down. That's different than number two and three. And number two and three, when you transition chords, you can get just the bass note first, and then the next note, and then the next note, and then just leave your fingers down. But, so that's a really big difference. When you're playing a block chord, you have to move all three fingers, which is probably more challenging. And when you're doing individual notes, in order to be legato across the bar, especially at high speeds, you need to get, you just need to get that bass note first, and then you have a split second to get the rest of the notes that are coming afterwards. So if you're trying to play this, and you're trying to jump into the whole chord shape, that's probably pretty challenging. Um, and you can do it. It's good practice still. It's good in your practice session to try that and to become efficient at that, but it isn't actually the most legato and most efficient way. The most efficient way is to get the next note that's occurring, uh, because it'll just be smoother, right? You can just get that note, and then the remaining notes. We're going to talk about full plants and sequential plants in a second, but just some um, problem solving in these arpeggios. Um, if you're buzzing, it could be that one of your fingers is is muting a different string here. So what you need to do is bring your wrist and hand forward and create curvature. Don't do it by throwing the wrist out though. Keep that wrist relatively straight and keep your palm close to the guitar neck to force curvature in the fingers. If I move my palm away, see what happens to my fingers? They flatten out. And the only way to get clearance from the string is to bring my hand out. And that's why you see players going like that, right? But straighten this out, bring the palm in, and force curvature. No curvature, curvature. That should stop you from hitting any of the strings below. Also make sure your guitar isn't tilted back too much, because that, that um, limits your um, clearance on the strings there too. By having the guitar more upright, you can see like tons of clearance, no clearance, tons of clearance, no clearance. So some problem solving in the left hand and the guitar position can give you all the clearance that you need. And of course in the right hand, keep that thumb in front of the fingers, make sure all the movements are moving in towards the palm. So this thumb comes out like that, the fingers move in towards the palm. Um, as an exercise, don't do this when you play, but as an exercise, you can touch your palm after the stroke with the fingers. Um, that will teach you the correct movement of the fingers. It, of course, it's too extreme to actually touch your palm when you're playing. Planting. We can exaggerate exercise number one by putting an eighth note rest in between each quarter note beat. So we'll play, but then on the eighth note, plant your fingers on the next chord, but don't play. So plant, 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 plant. Planting is just but putting your fingers on the next strings that need to be played before you play them. But doing it in a rhythmic way like that, like eighth note, eighth note, eighth note, um, is, is just good practice. When you, when you actually play arpeggios, you can't plant if you want it to be legato, right? Because that stops the sound. But 
Um, it's good practice for your muscle memory. If your fingers are, are in the right place before they have to play, then you're guaranteed to play the right strings. It's very good muscle memory practice for the fingers. So that's called a full plant when we put down all the fingers down on the strings. And it's really good practice. By the way, side note, um, how to practice that last chord is I'm sweeping the thumb over these two notes. So I'm, I'm plucking these ones with I, M, and A, and the thumb is doing like a deeper stroke, hitting so I can hit five strings. When you go to number two, you can now practice in full plants or sequential plants. Full plants would be all the right hand fingers down on the strings, then all of them on the strings again, all of them on the strings again, all, all. Not the most legato way, but again, good muscle memory and security practice. Um, for accuracy. There's a partial plant that you could do. Plant your thumb, plant your fingers, plant your thumb, plant your fingers, plant your thumb, plant your fingers. That's, that's a valid way of practicing as well. And then there's sequential planting. That's one plant at a time. So after every stroke, you're going to plant the next used finger on the string before you play. Whoops. <laughs> Let me do that again. Do you see how my fingers are planting? So I play the thumb and immediately plant the I finger on the next available string. The next required string. And then when I play the I finger, I plant the M. When I play the M, I plant the P. When I play P, I plant I. When I play I, I plant M. So I always have one finger resting on the string before I have to play that string. And you can become very proficient at that. At first, you have to go super slow. But you can go... Um, if I just do it on a single one... So I'm planting, you can see my fingers are touching the string before I play it. When I go faster and faster, I can still feel the planting. And it's not quite legato because I'm planting, but at faster speeds, it's like a security style of playing. I can still feel it. There's a moment when I go fast enough that you can't, you know, tell as much. Um, so it's a, it, at first you have to really think about the planting in each finger, um, but later on you really, uh, it's just a sensation in the hand. Your muscle memory knows it so well, it's a sensation in the hand that you don't have to think about at all. Um, so practicing that planting um, is a, is a really uh, a way to solidify your playing, and you know it can have so many benefits. It can be a way that you just practice in order to gain accuracy, but also in performance, you can use it as a security measure. If you get nervous and you shake or something like that. A little bit of planting can be really useful because it means that you always have a finger on the string. And it doesn't matter if you're shaking a little bit, if your finger's on the string already, you can shake all you want, um, but you'll still hit the correct string. So if you're feeling super nervous in a performance, maybe you'll do more planting. You'll lose some legato because things won't ring out quite as much as when you don't do any planting. But the, you know, there's a, there's a point in performance when if you're, you know, feeling pretty nervous and you really need that accuracy and security that you might have to do it and that will be the better result for your performance. So, um, and also just by being able to have this skill at your disposal, you can choose to use it or not. I think of it more as a practice method. 
Um, but nevertheless, you, if you have the skill, you can choose to use it in performance or not, and that's a great option to have. Just the ability to use it if you need it or if you want to. There's also other situations where the articulation of the piece requires, you know, a little bit more um, closed off, less sustained, a little bit more um, detached or staccato. So it can be useful um, to control the texture as well. A muddy texture that's ringing out, if you do more planting, you might be able to clean up that texture a little bit. These three little arpeggios are so easy and people, you, I'm sure you've played through them before, but maybe you didn't think about all these different things that we talked about today. And I hope that by thinking about it, you can enrich these um, three arpeggios and, and practice them a lot more and a lot more carefully. Um, you know, even at the professional level, you can take these three arpeggios and dive in pretty deep into how to practice them and finding out things about your technique um, through practicing them. And like I said too though, if you're having difficulty with the Giuliani arpeggios, make sure you've done my 100 open string exercises. I think it's really beneficial to just get rid of the left hand and focus primarily on the right hand.